know how they feel like that. Ah, limousine. You're imagining things. Yeah, Tell it. Ah, yeah, limousine's over here. Limousine? No. Yeah, I'll be following you. Thank you. 
Right. Tell you, uh, yeah. no. No, 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 You know, while we're here, we got to talk about a couple things. What? We got to talk about the will. What? Oh, yeah. Will? Yeah, the will. Well, we, we, we'll talk about it. We mean we will talk about it. We will, yeah. me. You could hand me the glasses there. Mm-hmm. I don't what? want any. Is that honey? Yeah. It's got a nice taste to it. Yeah. Good taste. Sweet. Mm-hmm. You watch me, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank One you. More, Marty. Yeah. It's all the glasses that he's got. Look, like I'll have the bottle. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Works out that way. Yeah. Happy, Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Salute. 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 Put the Salute. bottle. <laughs> We missed, we missed two yeah, more kids. Yeah, well, they're at the house. Huh? <laughs> they're waiting. All right. So okay. at the house? Yeah. Ready to get underway? Yes. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got it? 
Okay, one more time. Now hold it there, hold it. Okay. <laughs> 55 years I had a... What do you mean you had to? I had to suffer. She suffered too with you. No, 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 I suffered. No, no, that's what she told us. I don't see us. no battle scars. What she tells you is a different story. She, two sides she of said the story. that she had to put up with you. Do you think so, eh? That's what she told us. <laughs> Ooh, well, okay. And you're telling us you have to put up with her. Hey. Don't you think that you now, guys who, have to put up with one another? Now, who brings the... It's 50-50, probably. Yeah, it's 50-50 here, right? Now, who brings the... Uh, the bacon? The, 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 the stuff on the table. Yeah, but who puts it on the table? Huh? Who puts it on the table? She takes it off the table, turn the garbage can. <laughs> but isn't this a 50-50 proposition? Missing out. <laughs> <laughs> Anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can you can sue him for that, you know? The South Korea had a woman in the car. He's drinking. Yeah, but we're not driving. We got a designated uh, driver. <coughs> we got a <coughs> <we're gonna coughs> limo. <coughs> limo. <laughs> Your neighbors are gonna wonder what the heck's up with you. <laughs> I was just telling you, the bimbo I was with the last week. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, got, and she's got a lot of money. <laughs> she has her own limo. <laughs> we gotta take your picture, so save some film. Let's go out, Bobby. Let's go out this way here. Oh, great. <laughs> You're missing all the fun. Uh, Dick said that there's a certain limousine out there with, that has rollers. That's for Dick. Dick's going to order one. I had one. No one had one. I drive down the street and I tell the neighbor, uh, Mr. Kick, you, you, what do you What do you charge? You? <laughs> what do you charge? A uh, cousin of mine bought one. Oh. And I, I drove you mean actual purse? Purse. Yeah. Purse, yeah. <laughs> Drive up and he'd always come over the house. Drunk. Doctor was drunk. You know, he, he can be drunk at Tessanaski. When uh, he was born, the doctor was, 
He gets drunk, he goes upstairs in his office. You think some kind of a pill to come back sober again. <laughs> it was called a smart pill. Smart right, right up. Sobered right up. You know, when Jerry was born, Dad walked into the... Smile like that. Yeah, she was there. Yeah, I was there. When she was supposed to be born, they drove me to the hospital, and I laid in a darn bed, and it's all the morning and moaning and groaning, and I got up, I put my dress on, and I walked out of the hospital, got on a streetcar, went home. You went home? I went home. Get me out of here. My mother-in-law was sitting. with you? My mother-in-law was sitting on the porch. She looked at me walking up on the Shane Street, and I got off the streetcar. She says in Polish to me, she says, "What are you doing here?" Where's the baby? <laughs> <laughs> not yet, Ma. <laughs> which one? Which one? I went not labor, and I'm looking for a south yard. Huh? Mark. You mean you were in labor? Uh huh. And it huh? stopped. And it stopped. And so I got up, dressed up, and got, went walked out of the hospital, jumped on the streetcar, come home. Then call soon after that. Next morning. Next morning. <laughs> Dad, Dad's getting up for work. There comes the labor pains again. I drive me to the hospital. Just, Damn it, this time stay. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, uh, Marty again. Oh, Marty. I, I, dro I drove down Davidson over 100 miles an hour with my Mercury. I'm looking for a Scott's car, police department to escort me. And I, all the way down Davidson, I went all the way down Livernois. I just jumped for a couple of red lights. And there are no Scott's cars. No, not, no, you can see a policeman if you wanted to. There wasn't a cop. There wasn't a cop in sight. I was doing on Davidson, the Davidson Express right there. Past your window there, huh? And I had that Mercury move, but I'm telling you, she's, what I did, what really happened, I come home from work and I went in the top to wash myself, I got my feet in it. She went to the toilet, she said, hey, you, uh, you better take me to the hospital, I'm, uh, what you call, I'm uh, ready uh, for the baby. <laughs> So I put my pants on, a little socks, no nothing. Down Davidson, man, I sh uh, shot like a bat out of hell. Did he stay there? I jumped right over the red, red lights and everything no, else. he stayed there. I was surprised because after Marty was born, I asked the nurse, is my husband still out there? He said, yeah, he's still out there. Did he stay there with you, with Barbara? No. With me? No. With Jerry? No. Stanley? No. Only with Bruno? Only with Bruno. Why don't you take your son to show him some more? Show him Only with Bruno. His, his Bruno. Well, he was worried because I was, uh, I was hemorrhaging. Oh. And I didn't know that I was pregnant. I was pregnant. He had the, it was a foul right. He had a lot, a lot. Right. Right. I'm just talking about children. She says she has five. What's the, what's the oldest? She's 17. What is that girl? What is the youngest? That's a, and then nine months. Let's see, you're at 37 now, and 20 years from now. Uh, that's really planning. You got drugs? Drugs? We got drugs. I don't want to tell you any of that. Do you need dog? Uh, 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 Oscar. 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 No? Come here. <laughs> Take him home with you. Look at Bradley. Look at Bradley. Look at Bradley. I know it. I know it. We knew Well, then say something to Bradley. Don't say something to Bradley. And a pants you got that uh, blue jeans and tennis shoes. Blue jeans and tennis shoes. That's it. Right Shut there. up here, gay. <laughs> Sorry. You got gray pants and pimp shoes. Tennis shoes and uh, blue jeans. Blue jeans. That girl stuff. Yeah, that's, that's the style of American style. Oh, John and blue jeans, I'm a nigger. You missed me.
Yeah. You buy that cheap shit from Kmart, what do you expect, man? Yeah. <laughs> Minus peanuts over here. Okay. Oh, you got that full of water or concrete? Uh, the shaft is too shallow on it. And uh -huh. it's wider than the umbrella diameter, and so you got a got too much tolerance back and forth. So moves uh, fit, huh? Like after 20 yeah, well, I got a good one for my iron. I mean, they're all out. Yeah. I'm waiting for. They got the the, the uh, aluminum one that has real deep well, sockets. Just roll all the damn decks. Yeah. It's, it's not even so much. <laughs> but I still I still won't have uh, the. Here you are. Roll all the deck. Put a tube in there, and we can insert it. That ain't going nowhere. You can all the stability you want. You know, trouble with the table is so light, probably moving around. Yeah, it's a table very light. Yeah, yeah it's dry dock now. Yeah, you pull it this way, and yeah. Excuse me. I know. What do you think, at the zoo? Dad, this is a card written by all of them. What about the will? <laughs> <laughs> you always had to get a, a, one in the crowd, you know? I didn't say a thing. I know, but you got to have one in the crowd always. Right? Thomas, did I say it at the right time? <laughs> See it? Right. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> what about Tom and the will? You always had one in the crowd, you know? Sitting down like a mouse, and all of a sudden, whoosh! What's your problem? Give me a kiss, yeah? Give me a grandpa a kiss. You want to give me a kiss? Sure. Go ahead. He needs one. Thank you. Okay. You my buddy? Come here. Okay. I had a woman. No, 50 years she's put up with you. There's a difference. Hey, got iron The only thing she was doing was putting up with my money. That's what she was doing. How did you want to put up with a man who had for 50 years with money? I mean, he's got money. After he got no money, they didn't put up with him anymore. Fragile. It might be dynamite, Ma. Right, Judy? What? Oh, fragile? Yeah? Yeah. I was right, ain't it?
What, what color was that for? Not what year were you born? Um, green, I like guess, was that. Can they get married in 38? No, 38. <laughs> green, 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 that, that, that's uh, Julie that's giving away family stuff. Yeah, Julie. Yeah. yeah. Seventeen. I was going out with her and she's fifteen.
Yeah. That other that. clock that I had. Oh, the spinning nuts on it? Yeah. yeah. No, that wasn't me. No? <laughs> it was Bruno, right? It was Bruno. Bruno. <laughs> David. Poor Bruno, he's been getting blamed for everything. Come on, everything. Everything. Come on everything. 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 we'll get it going faster. Oh, you get it. I figured that one. 75 cents a gift. You bet you home. Three thousand nine hundred dollars. Look at the income. That's what's going on. Didn't help him to pick that up and shake it to get it running. Well, we gotta think of the lock that. Uh, door open. Yeah. Your house is down again. Twenty cents. How much were McDonald's? <laughs> Did you hear that? A gallon of gas was 20 cents in 1938. Bugs Bunny began. Mm -hmm. and I used to even get pots and pans. How do you think I got my first pots and pans? With gas? The next oh, for day, a dollar? two days, get another pot, get a frying pan, get a big cooking pot for cooking mm -hmm. soup. That's how I get. Then I went to the show and got my glasses. Your china. <laughs> yeah, my china. <laughs> okay. Oh, things are rough then, kids. Things are rough. There you go. Bank man. Sign it up. bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we come before you today, and I ask you that your blessing would rest upon, saturate, clothe, and go with Stan and Sally as they give their lives to each other today. Pour out your love on them, keep them in all their ways, provide for them, protect them, and draw them ever closer into your arms of love. We welcome you and we thank you now in our precious Jesus' name. Amen. Stan and John Jr., will you take this from us? Sally Elizabeth Slut to be your wedded wife. Thank you. Sally Elizabeth Slut, will you take this man, Stanley DeJohn Jr., to be your wedded husband? I do. Will you live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? And will you love each other, comfort each other, honor and keep each other in sickness and in health? And will you forsake all others and keep yourself faithful and true to each other for the rest of your lives? If so, you may both say, I do. I do. Would you turn, take her by your hand, Stanley, and looking into her eyes, I'd like you to say to her, Sally, I love you. Exactly, I love you. And I'll do my very best. I'll do my very best. To be a good husband. To be a good husband. I'll care for you. I'll care for you. I'll honor you. I'll honor you. And I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. And Sally, I'd like you to say, Stanley, I love you. Stanley, I love you. And I'll do my very best. And I'll do my very best. To be a good wife. Be a good wife. I'll care for you. I'll care for you. Honor you. Honor you. And I'll be your friend. And I'll be your friend. As you continue to look into each other's eyes, Stan, please repeat after me. I stand with Deshaun Jr. I stand with Deshaun Jr. Take you, Sally Slip. Take you, Sally Slip. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. And cherish you. And cherish you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Sally, please repeat after me. I Sally Slip. I saw his lot. Take you, Stanley Dijon. Take you, Stanley Dijon. To be my wedded husband. Be my wedded husband. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. And cherish you. To cherish you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Now, Stan and Sally, I want to talk to you about your rings for a moment. In this day and age, we've so lost the significance of it. But these rings now are a symbol of the promises that you've made. We think of them so often as just something that's a beautiful piece of jewelry, and they are. And we think of them as something that when we wear, it's going to tell everyone we come in contact with, but we're married to someone, and it does. That's not the purpose. It's really not for the benefit of the bride and the groom. You see, today you've entered into a covenant. You've made an agreement between the two of you to love and honor and cherish and be a friend to each other, no matter what comes along in life, whether it's poverty or wealth, sickness or health. And these rings now are a symbol of the covenant that you've made with another person. 
So as you receive your rings today, don't just receive the beautiful messages. Don't just receive the traditional wedding gown. But receive the promises that have been made to you. Then as you go forth as husband and wife, the purpose of the rings is this. Is that that ring is there to remind you that no matter what presents itself in your life, that together you are well able to overcome the negative. That you're not in this thing anymore. They are also there to remind you to rejoice in the moment of every day because of the love that you share. So keeping that in mind, conserving the love, and you're all the way in the world. <laughs> hold her hand and say to her, with this ring, with this ring which is a symbol of my promises, of my promises I, give my life to you, I give my life to you as your husband. As your husband I, receive you as my bride, I receive you as my bride, for with this ring, for this ring I be with you. I be with you. Take this ring and place it on his finger, giving your promises. And you may assist on that stand if you need to. Hold his hand and say to him, with this ring, with this ring, which is a symbol of my promises, which is a symbol of my promises, I give my life to you, I give my life to you, as your wife, as your wife, I receive you as my husband, I receive you as my husband, for with this ring, for with this ring, I be wed, I be wed. Turn to face me now, please, and put your arm around your bride's You know, I was just telling another couple, I've been married for 38 years, and so I think I could tell you lots of things about what works, what doesn't work. I've been a minister for a long time. But this one thing I do know that I can tell you with all assurance that the most valuable and the most precious and the most treasured gift you're ever going to receive is standing in your arms. So keeping that in mind, will you both do everything that you know to do for the rest of your lives to care for this gift with a love that is pure, with mercy and tenderness, affectionate and assurance of your love, and with a lot of forgiveness and a lot of encouragement. Will you both make every effort to see to it that your home is filled with laughter and peace and joy and contentment? Will you both do that to the very best of your personal ability? Yeah. And by the power given to me by the state of Nevada, and as a minister, I pronounce you to be husband and wife. In any case, you go ahead. <laughs> See their faces. How do you feel? I'm okay, Steve. We stopped word. They picked up a second suspect in your description. You want to come down to the precinct tonight, Dean? Yeah, let's do it. I'll see you later. Uh -huh. Are you okay? Right, yeah, yeah. Time. This man says he brought that cop down here. Uh, you guys want to take a statement? Or? Yeah, sure. Uh, no, uh, where did you say you picked this guy up, Mr. Wilson? Leon Wilson. I picked him up over by the French Embassy. Uh, he said he was guarding a place or something. Okay. Uh, Velasquez, did you check this out? The guy you popped is, uh, Giancarlo Vanelli, a.k.a. Charlie Van. We've got him as an enforcer with the Marchese family. You know, it could be these are the guys that you were staked out for. What do you say we get Mr. Cleon Brown down here, see if he can identify him? We'll send to Carl and see if he can ID this one. Yeah, that's him. You sure? Mask him. That's him. All right. Uh, are you D.A. Stephen Walzer? Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, here you go. Thanks. Thanks. The captain said to tell you the hospital call. The cop didn't make it. He died in the car on the way over. Thanks. David. David. Look, at least we got him. They're cop killers, and we're going for the chair on this one. All right?
Sign check, please. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is precisely the procedure that will be used. Our personnel are trained. The equipment is ready. I knew you weren't right, Mitchell. I just couldn't put my finger on it. You're just scared, aren't you? You can't take it. Killing people? I'm supposed to like that, Inspector? You have to like a law to uphold it? A law designed to support cops to protect them? No, sir. What, do you got a better idea? No, sir, I just don't believe... Believe what? <laughs> what, are you some kind of radical, Mitchell? No, sir. Do you think you're fit to work on a case of two men who killed a cop? I made the arrest, sir. Yeah, but you're not prepared to send him to the chair. You did nothing to help us extend the death penalty. What do you want to do, coddle men who kill cops? You're not fit to wear a badge. I made the arrest. Now, that's all, Inspector. Detective Doyle and I have some witnesses to question. Sean. You served in Korea, didn't you, Mitchell? Yes, sir. Do you have any objection to killing them? We didn't shoot our prisoners, sir. Come on, come on, come on, Dave. We got a job. Come on, come on, come on. Charlie Van and Carl Rickler. All right, what do we got on them? Van's done time for assault, a couple of B and E's. There was a warrant out for Rickler when they arrested him. That's probably why he was so touchy. Good. Now I want everything they ever did, including parking violations. What about witnesses? Mrs. Johnson says she didn't get a good look. Doesn't want to get involved. Anyone talking to her? Mitchell is. Look, we got a problem. We got a lot of problems. I'm talking about Mitchell. Look, I talked to the guys and they're with me on this. Now, don't get me wrong, Mitchell's a good cop, but he doesn't believe in this, and I don't want to work with him on it. You want off? I want him off. Well, except for that woman who doesn't want to testify, he's the only witness who can put him in that alley. Oh, and he's talking to her now. That's great. What if he scares her off? What does that leave us? One witness that could send him to the chair and he doesn't want him to go? Mitchell will do what he's supposed to do. Don't worry about it. Look, I don't trust him, and I don't think any of these other guys do. Is that right, Fetters? You got a problem, too? I work with anybody. Torelli? I agree with Velasquez. Nothing personal against Mitchell, but he's not with us on this. It's just that simple. Look, the kid come out of the alley. He falls right in front of him. He's bleeding all over the place, calling out for his mama, for God's sake. What kind of a cop doesn't want to see these two creeps stand in the chair they do a thing like that? Look, I, I don't want any part of them. She won't testify. I talked to him. He says they're both okay. He wanted me to tell you he's aware he put everybody in a bad position. He wants you to know he's sorry about that. He says he's okay, and you got nothing to worry about. I got nothing to worry about. They buried that cop today. Then after that, they got nothing else to do except figure out how they're going to get him and his friend in the electric chair. I got nothing to worry about. Think I'll have nothing to worry about when they start getting that chair ready, Tony. It's the district attorney. That's what he'll be saying. Oh, I don't want no part of that chair, Mr. District Attorney. How about they give you Gino Marchese? Not Charlie Van, Mr. Marchese. He's a stand-up guy. They're gonna make him sit down. You listen to me, Tony. I'm putting up 50 big ones. And I want that cop that busted him taken care of. You give him the money or you buy a contract on him. I don't care. Right away. I'll make a couple of calls, Mr. Marchese. Now, Tony, I'll make the calls from here. Outside. I'm going outside. And tell Charlie that we're taking care of his problem.
Yeah. Listen, it's me, Tony. Mr. Rem's concerned about Charlie Vance. He wants to cut that bust and I'm taking care of it. There's 50 grand. Use it how it does the most good. You understand? Yeah. I understand. Good. It began not with a clean sheet of paper, but with a 75-year history. A history of building automobiles that make the most of the driver's skill. Because how you drive is as important as what you drive, BMW introduces a car that could improve both. The BMW 325 IS Coupe. My father, Louis Rich, started his company in 1921. He believed in hard work and patience. When he came to Turkey, he decided the best way to cook it was slowly, very slowly. Once we tasted his turkey, none of us minded the weight. At Lewis Ridge, we still believe the right way to get moist, tender turkey is to slow roast it. Which may be why Lewis Ridge sells more turkey cold cuts than anyone else in America. Slow roasted like you would if you had the time. Your breakfast, sir. This new Kellogg's Frosted Bran is quite sensible. Crispy flakes with whole wheat and bran, lightly frosted for a taste. A taste that's delicious! I love it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I love it! <coughs> and new Kellogg's frosted bran has less sugar than you'd imagine, but the taste, it's out of We've sight. got to stop serving this. <laughs> new Kellogg's frosted bran, wildly delicious, sensibly good. Most eye doctors agree dry, irritated eyes should be treated. And doctors agree, dry, irritated eyes can be effectively treated with soothing, cooling Visine Extra. Visine gets the red out. It's Dave's Salad Days at Wendy's with five great salads to go, like our taco salad, deluxe garden salad, and a new grilled chicken salad made fresh every day. You keep eating, and I'll keep picking and picking and picking. The NBC Monday Night Movie will return following these messages. NBC presents country music's biggest week of the year. First on Tuesday, Garth Brooks is back. America's greatest performer returns to NBC. Then Wednesday, live from Hollywood, it's country music's biggest night. Garth Brooks, Reba McIntyre, Clint Black, and others on the Academy of Country Music Awards. Garth Brooks, Tuesday, the Academy of Country Music Awards, Wednesday on NBC. Good evening, I'm Mort Krim. First reports indicated both he and his wife were attacked and stabbed. Well, tonight the story changes. Now the husband is questioned for murder. Doctors are keeping a close watch on this child tonight. At 11, another medical miracle you'll find hard to believe. How much extra should you pay to have your trash picked up, even if you already pay a fee? The going price in one Oakland County community could go up by a dollar a bag. Also tonight, the man who's suing Chrysler for millions, and he won't hire a lawyer. Join us right here at 11 on the Night Beat. Pontiac wants to get real about the sky-high price of Toyota Camry. Grand Am has all new styling and standard anti-lock brakes for $2,300 less. And now, get real deal financing as low as 2.9% helps you save even more. So get real, Cameron. And get going for get real deals on Grand Am at a Pontiac dealer today. See Jim Cosley, Somerset, or Ray Latham Pontiac. With our new celebration sampler, you get a dozen ways to celebrate. Celebration Sampler comes with a chimichanga, taco, enchilada, plus seven-piece dessert plate. At $7.99, it's worth celebrating. Gigi's a celebration of What used to be done the hard way, today can be done the easy way. And the tough jobs can be cut down to size. Just as doing this can now be done like this. Roundup kills grasses and weeds in sidewalks, along fences, and in driveways. One squirt kills them roots and all. With Roundup, grasses and weeds just don't come back. So instead of pulling weeds, you can spend your time doing something you really want to do. Nothing kills weeds better or easier than a Roundup. Why I'm fighting to be a transsexual. Next, Jerry Springer.
funeral services were held this afternoon for 22-year-old patrolman John Travers. Delegations of police officers from 30 states contributed to the overflow crowd at St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan and formed a procession to the cemetery that stretched almost a mile through the city, then wound its way to the cemetery in Queens, passing through the neighborhood where young Officer Travers grew up. Not just in his native Queens, but all along the route, silent and mournful men and women came out of their houses and shops and bowed their heads. Sorry, I just, uh, just wanted to finish up in here, that's all. Isn't that where we were going to put the crib? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Let's put it back. Okay. What about this stuff? Uh, that's all going to go downstairs in the basement. David, you listening to me? Why don't I just put this stuff in the basement, huh? You want to talk? Now, you don't have to do this. No, 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 no it's fine. Uh, we can talk later. David, honey, please, just put that stuff down. Look, I don't want to get into a discussion about what's wrong with me, okay? There's nothing wrong about just talking about things. Okay, fine. Why don't we talk about the baby's room? You know, we can start in this closet. When I was his age, I'd already been to Korea. I don't think the kid had been on the force more than two years. His mom and dad, they were young, you know. They were in their 40s. Doesn't make any sense, does it? I knew these guys had killed him. They're bums. Wouldn't cross the street to save their lives, but killing them, I, I, I don't know about that. I just, I don't know. You just got to go with what you believe. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not exactly the most educated guy in the world. I mean, you know that. I mean, who the hell am I to think that I'm right and the rest of the world is wrong? But everybody is going crazy. They're all running around. They're, they're fired up to pull the switch. You know what they're calling themselves? The chair team. They're acting like this is some kind of a game, only I'm not playing, and now all of a sudden that makes me the enemy. Well, that's their problem, David. Don't listen to him. These are the guys I work with, Stace. You know, my buddies. They don't trust me anymore. I want you to meet FBI agents Pucci and Hoops. Hey, I've asked wait. Inspector Kemenian to join us. He's not part of the Internal Affairs Unit, but his uh, office has a special interest in the missile matter. Then he's already under investigation. Well, we haven't come up with any specific allegations yet. Well, I think we can help you there. We've got some wiretaps in and around premises frequented by an organized crime figure named Gino Marchese. Detective Mitchell's name came up. He's involved in an investigation concerning some of Marchese's people, isn't he? Well, two of Marchese's men are going to stand trial for murder and a police officer. Take a listen to this. Yeah? It's me, Tony. Mr. Rums concerned about Charlie Van. He wants to cut that bust of him taken care of. There's 50 grand. Use it how it'll do the most good. So what's that sound like to you? I don't know. What do you think now, John? We'll look into it. We've got a long road ahead of us, guys. As you know, the legislature turned down appeals to expand the use of the death penalty. There hasn't been an execution in the state in five years, but if we can break that logjam, if we can make it happen, that's the best tool we have for going back to the legislators and showing them it can work. Now, in a capital case, the appellate courts are going to scrutinize every piece of testimony, every motion, every ruling, every single thing we've done. We can pass that test. We have the perfect case. The victim was white. 
Almost all the witnesses were white, and above all, the defendants are white. I thought we were doing this because there's a dead cop. Just give me a break. Of course we are. But this way we can carry out the sentence and establish a president without racial overtones. Yeah, then we get back to frying the brothers. Yeah. Listen, were you serious about what you said in there? Maybe I was. Well, doesn't it bother you? If you look for me to help you out, David, forget it. Look, do you think that this is the answer? Executing people, I mean... I'm a cop, just like you, Mitchell. I don't have answers. I just do my job. Ernie, you don't think it's right any more than I do. That's all I'm asking. That's all you're asking me. Let's get this straight, man. What I feel and don't feel, it's not your business. It's not Walsner's business, nor the department's. You got that? That's how you stay alive on this job. Yeah, I got that. Davey! How's it going? Everybody still on your case? Yeah, what do you think? I overheard you and Ernie talking. Listen, give me a minute. I just want to throw my two cents in. All right? And this is coming from your friend, but more importantly, your partner. You think I should have kept my mouth shut about the chair, right? Davey, right? listen. Everybody's got stuff they believe in. But sometimes you got to learn to keep it to yourself. Look, they came to me. They asked me to do a commercial for the chair. Now, what am I supposed to do, huh? No way. I know, I know. That's what I keep trying to tell the guys. I seem to spend most of my time defending you lately. Then don't. Hey, listen, Dave. I'm on your side. Okay? All right. I mean, what's up? You ain't gonna be happy until everybody's against you? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just... Just a little gun shy, you know? See you tomorrow. Hey, Dave. I go with my partner. Give my love to Stacy. Hey, Sean? What's up? is at the end of 14th Street. Was this a gag or something? Sound like a gag? You want to keep me company? Come on, let's go. This is 14th Street. Go easy. There it is. Anybody was trying to set you up, would you? We're working. Cut your car in half. Baby, where are you going? Come on, answer the phone. I just, uh, just call and see how you were doing. Oh, we're, we're doing great. Is everything all right? Yeah. 
Sure, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah, everything's fine. Look, I'll, I'll see you in a little while, all right? She's okay. Mom had to say goodbye the today. I left to find a star. People said that I could sing and knew that I'd go far. You know, I always knew Bobby was going to be a star. The two months. Remember how she used to sing around the house all the time? <laughs> Even when we were little girls. You miss her like I do. I believe I'm gonna have a nice glass of iced tea. I came home again, home again. Something like the feeling of family and friends. I came home to stay, if only for a day. I'm going on a road that leads me home. Cool, clean, refreshing Lipton iced tea. Share the experience. Check it out. The object of the game is to score as many points as possible. Why preventing the opposing team from scoring? The player should not dribble between two opponents unless he may go by without contact. The court of the net shall be constructed to check the ball momentarily as it passes through the basket. Points are gained by skillfully lofting a round ball into a cylindrical basket. Skillfully lofting, skillfully. You get the idea. I love this game. Mercury Sable continues to distinguish itself as a leader in automotive design. This year, we redesigned the exterior, the interior, the instrument panel, and equipped it with dual airbags, a feature not offered by any other manufacturer in this class. Other than that, we've pretty much left it alone. All this and the quality of a Mercury. Good morning, birthday girl. Don't remind me. I hope no one finds out. It's our secret. Introducing Pond's Foaming Cleanser and Toner in One. It deep cleans and helps tighten pores to bring out your natural radiance. And this birthday wish goes out to Deborah Palmer from a secret admirer. You are so beautiful to me. Ponds. It brings out your natural radiance. This will be the biggest Thursday ever as America comes together one last time to say farewell to the Cosby Show. Then it's a big cheers practical joke on the mob. And on wings, is this the big one for Helen? I can do anything in a bedroom that that kid can do. Except get someone to join me. It's all on the biggest NBC Thursday ever. Thursday's a night of romantic surprises, penetrating cases, obscene condoms, and assertiveness training. The day straddling little escargot. All new LA Law Thursday. All right, someone's sending you a message. Think it through, Mitchell. They can get my car, they can get me. It's not that subtle, Captain. Keep going. What? What? What are you getting at? What do you think? I think you're crazy. It's got to be Charlie Van's people. Does it? Yeah. I'm the only guy that can put Van and Rickler in that alley. That cuts both ways, Mitchell. Give me that again, Captain. You heard me right the first time. There are a lot of people around here who don't like some of the things you're doing. Wait a second, wait a second. Are you telling me cops did this? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying anything. Look, if I'm out of the way, a couple cop killers are gonna walk. Now, you tell the people that don't like what I'm doing to think about that. What'd he say? You heard what he said, Sean. Anybody miss anything? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go pay my case, you little visit. Let them know I'm still around. All right, I'm in. All right. Hey, Mitchell. What? I don't think you should be taking any of the fellas with you. You're gonna be making social calls on your new friends. What the hell's that supposed to mean? Hey, 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 Velasquez. I don't need anybody telling me what to do. Sure you do, Doyle. My chance these men killed a cop. Why well, do you want to be hanging around with the guy trying to keep those bums out of the chair? What's with that crap, Velasquez? Why don't you tell it to your cop killer friend?
David! Stop it! You're just not yourself, David. You're like confused. It's the only way I can put it. It wouldn't hurt to talk to Father Scanlon, would it? Yeah, what's he gonna tell me? If I knew that, I'd be a priest. Now, Stacy says you've been unhappy. What's she been telling you? She's worried about you. She didn't tell us a thing. I've got eyes. For 12 years, I come to your office. People say, can I get you a cup of coffee, Mr. Mitchell? David's out. He'll be right back. They're your friends. Yeah, well, friends are supposed to trust each other. That's what I'm talking about. You come in today, you're wrestling around with him. I say, this isn't my son. Yeah, well, maybe you came to the wrong place. What is the matter with you? There's nothing. Nobody thinks I'm me anymore. I'm getting it from the captain, from the guys. Now I'm getting it from you, too. This is me, Dad. I'm what I always was. Now, if that's not good enough for you, then maybe we should stop wasting each other's time. David. I could have killed him right then, you know? I had my gun in my hand. And I hit him with it, and he kept fighting. I can still see it when I close my eyes. I have my gun right in his throat. But you didn't shoot. Yeah, well, the trigger guard jammed up against the trigger when I hit him. Otherwise, maybe I would have. I don't know. Is that what's bothering you? No, I, I, I think if I shot him, I think I could have lived with that. It was combat. These things happen. Nobody's to blame, you know? But this... This is different. I mean, now, now you take a man, you strap him in a chair, and you turn on electricity so strong his skin burns. That's not the same thing, Dad. You know, they shave their legs so the hair doesn't catch fire. Did you know that? The man's got to do what he believes in, David. Yeah, well, see, that's a problem. Because I believe in being a cop. I don't believe in executing people. Now, you tell me, can I do both of these things? I'll tell you what, you finish your coffee. I'm gonna go pay Father Scanlon a visit. Excuse me, Mr. Winslow. Hi. I, I was just wondering, that, that part of the yard... I know. Uh, the boy didn't finish the work. I told him not to go back. Oh. Is there some kind of problem? Look, uh, Mrs. Mitchell, can we step over there? Huh? We can talk. Uh, look, there were some men here, and uh, they asked a lot of questions about you. About me? No, yeah, about you, Mr. Mitchell. What men? Uh, what kind of questions? What kind of questions? Uh, well, uh, do you need money? How, how, how do you pay for the work? Look, Mrs. Mitchell, I don't want that kind of trouble in my store, OK? Oh, no, no, Mr. Winslow. There must be some mistake here. There can't be any trouble. My husband, he, he's a police officer. Look, I know what your husband is, OK? I don't want that kind of money, and I don't want that kind of aggravation. Mrs. Mitchell, there's plenty of other places that'll fix up your yard, okay? Doesn't the Bible say, thou shalt not kill? Of course it does. But perhaps that commandment should have been translated, thou shalt not commit murder. You, uh, you weren't violating your conscience when you had to kill during the war, were you? It was in the war, Father. Well, some people think it is. 
Perhaps that's just a metaphor or an exaggeration. But the point that I want to make is this. Go ahead. Capital punishment is not inconsistent with church doctrine. Wait a second, Father. Are you telling me I'm wrong? Not necessarily. We have no quarrel with conscientious objection. It's just that it can't be based in church teaching. And the same is true for you if you find capital punishment repugnant. Your mother tells me that you and your wife are expecting a child. Yeah, she's in her six month. <laughs> Think about that new life, David. The prospect of death in all of its forms can be very daunting. There's no greater miracle than a new life to wash all of that pain away. I'll try and do that, Father. Thank you. David, I know how troubled you are. But don't let that trouble cloud your judgment. Don't give in to temptation. What are you saying, Father? Material temptation. You're confused, and that can make it hard to sort out who your friends really are. Sometimes people give in to the wrong people when they're confused. We're ready, Father. You have to guard against that son. Father Scanlon, we... Oh, yeah. I know better than that. I'm sorry, okay? Mm -hmm. Blew it. <laughs> What's for dinner? Oh, what tuna fish. Tuna fish? No, stay there, stay there. Is it made yet? No. I got it. I got it. It's the least I can do. Oh, <sighs> uh, David? Yeah. There were two men following me today. I saw them in town and uh, in the mall. Did you get a good look at them? Well, no, they were they were in the car. Uh, Stace, you know you got. No, I, I wasn't imagining it, David. Okay. Okay. Well, uh. No, don't put the set with that knife here. Okay? What's wrong with them? What's the red knife? This one. All right. Okay. They were following me. I know they were. All right. I'll, uh, I'll have somebody look into it, okay? But, but there's more. I, I spoke to Mr. Winslow. Yeah. Down at the garden center, and he said that there have been people in there asking questions about us. Uh, questions. Well, like how we paid the bills, and 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 do we have a lot of money? Things like that. He, he was very upset. He even told the boy not to come and finish the yard. All right, okay. Don't worry about it. All right. I'll talk to him. Okay, I'll go. I'll go down there Saturday, and, and I'll see him. What are you looking for now? Mayonnaise. Oh, um, we finished that job. I got another one. Yes. Oh, hey, I'll get it. I'll get it. David, how can you be so calm about this? I mean, you, you go see the guy on Saturday? That's not the point, and you know it. What is the point? The point is that, that there are people out there following me. They're asking questions about us. I mean, something's going on here, and we don't have any idea what it is. I don't know. You know, maybe it's a trial. I, I'm testifying. No, maybe David, you have testified at a million trials, and, and, and I have never, ever been kicked out of a store. Oh. I'm sorry. I'll look into it, okay? Right. Uh, come on, come on, sit down. Yeah. <sighs> it's just that it's Mr. Winslow, he made it sound like you were some sort of gangster or, you know, crook or something. Look, forget about Mr. Winslow, all right? I, I, I don't want to see you getting you all... You don't want to see me what, David? Getting all worked up over something? I mean, ever since this thing happened, we have... Oh. Mm. Oh. What is it? Oh. Hello, 
What's wrong? I don't know. Are we special or what? Somebody got us post raisin brand. It's premium. What's premium? It means it's special like us. Look at this premium flake. You see the whole wheat and wheat bran? That's why it's so good for us. You know everything, Daddy. And somebody knows we love lots of big, plump raisins. I got so many. Wow, premium. Somebody sure must think we're special. It must be Mommy. Post raisin bran, it's premium. And that makes everybody feel like somebody special. Do you know what my favorite country is? Country Sand Lysol Spray. There's not another country like it. I wouldn't change my country. For a million bucks. Country Scent Lysol Disinfectant Spray is a refreshing blend of country fragrances in a disinfectant spray. Isn't it time you move to a new country? I love this country. Wasted time. Not enough time. Unemployment. You never needed it more. 1,000 milligrams of strong pain relief for today's headaches. Introducing new Extra Strength Bayer Plus with Stomach Guard. Now there's no pain you can't bear. Deep down, what's the dirtiest word in your bathroom? Soap! New improved Lysol Basin Tub and Tile Cleaner now has twice the cleaning power to wipe out soap scum. And it even gets rid of germs. Get your bathroom deep down clean with new Lysol Basin Tub and Tile Cleaner. It's hard to describe when you hold your child for the very first time. You feel that little hand. You hear that little cry. You realize you're responsible for someone else. It changes your priorities. It even changes what you drive. The 1992 Toyota Previa, along with standard driver's side airbag and optional anti-lock brakes, it's the only van to meet all passenger car, federal motor vehicle safety standards. Toyota Previa. Changes everything. The morning belongs to Speed Stick. It's 110% protection against wetness and odor that lasts all day. Lady Speed Stick protects you like a man, treats you like a woman. Powerful protection for both of you. Bye, the NBC Monday Night Movie will return following these messages. From Clifford Irving's provocative bestseller comes a motion picture event. There sits a monster. He thought he knew who committed a murder. I will nail your butt to the wall. Two can play at that game. But he never thought he'd be the one to pay for it. You're gonna set me free. The world premiere of Trial on NBC Sunday. Good evening, I'm Carmen Harlan. He said his wife was stabbed and killed by two unknown attackers, but police say they've heard this story before. And tonight, it's the husband who's under suspicion. It's not just the stuff of moving. Stalking is terrorism that police can do little about. Tonight, the real-life cases of two actresses. Other towns have a law like this, but Birmingham didn't. Tonight, all the changes will have that story. Also tonight, the star of Cheers, who doesn't care much for Jay Leno. All tonight on the Night Beat at 11. What can the ocean spray cranberry do that no other taste can do? H hit it, boys. Bow, bow, bow. Sweet tart. Sweet tart. Ocean spray cran drinks. It's amazing what a little cran can do. Bow, bow, bow. And now a little cran can save you a lot of money when you refill with ocean spray liquid concentrate. The story you're about to see is true. Bob Medici, age 37, was a family man with a problem. He needed a family car. Upon investigation, Mr. Medici discovered Chevy Lumina. For just $13,905, Lumina had ABS brakes, a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper plus warranty, and room for six. Lumina, a.k.a. Family Circle's domestic family car of the year, also had 1,000 cash back or low 6-9 financing. Mr. Medici was sentenced to life, happily ever after. See Buff Whalen in Sterling Heights and Ed Rinky Chevrolet in Centerline. Malcolm Jamal Warner takes you behind the scenes for favorite moments, outtakes, and more on The Last Laugh, Memories of the Cosby Show. Thursday night at 7.30, only on Channel 4. A football hero sees his double, and it isn't pretty, on the next Mari. Stay out of my 
way, punks. Hey! I'm on Casey. Do I know you? You're messing with my family, Marchese. Mitchell, isn't it? Hey, my wife damn near had a miscarriage last night. Are you nuts? Get off. You come near her again, you or any of your people. I swear I'd go. Get the hell off me. Hey, get away. Nobody went there, nobody. Why would I do that? You tell me. Hey, I don't mess with cops. You heard what I had to say? You've been warned. Hey, Mitchell, I don't make trouble for cops and their families. Your problem is with your own people. They got problems with you. Go talk to them. And next time you come in here, make sure you bring your manners. Yes or no, that's all I'm asking you. Maybe internal affairs. They don't tell me what they do. Look, I had it with that crap, Captain, all right? I want a straight answer. My wife spent the night in the hospital last night, OK? She almost lost a baby. Now, what the hell is going on? Look, I'm sorry about your wife. But I warned you this would happen. Then there were cops following. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't say that. Look, if you've got a problem, take it up with the IED. Look, We've nothing to talk about. Yeah, well, that's just what I'm going to do. Mitchell. Mitchell, just a man. We're going to have a little talk. Why don't you, uh... Captain, can we use your office, please? This is John Ehrlich from Internal Affairs. This police officer has been seen associating with organized crime figures. You followed me? Unless, of course, he was involved in a police investigation. You've been following my wife? Was he involved in a police investigation? Hey, ask me to my face. I'll do that. The word on the street is that there's $50,000 to take care of the detective that locked up Charlie Van. You went to my priest, didn't you? Where do you get off telling people that kind of crap about me? We talk to some people, yeah. He's warning me about temptations. He should have been warning me about creeps like you. Just answer the question, Mitchell. You stupid, arrogant bastards. That wasn't a bride. That was a hit. We consider that. Yeah, consider still... this. You've been on my ass ever since that award ceremony. But while you've had everybody running around town trying to dig up whatever they could on me, somebody cut my car in half. Wanted to prove they could get to me. Of course, your little investigation didn't turn that up, did it? The guy's out there looking to put a hit on me, and you and Mr. Internal Affairs over here, you're too busy sending out snakes to dig around in my yard, mess around with my wife. You, anybody, Internal Affairs, anybody, you come around my family again, they better have their guns where they can get them. You thought you were in danger. Why didn't you ask for protection? From you? Then I would have had two things to worry about. It had to be checked. Did you get any sleep last night? Oh, I tried a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. I'm a little tired. I'm go home. Yeah, well, from now on, you got to take things easier, all right? Hey, David, listen. As soon as we get home, I'm getting into bed, and I will not get up, I promise you, OK? All right, watch this. Uh, we're not going home. What do you mean? I'm taking you to my mother's. What? Honey, now listen no, to me. Listen David. to me. She'll take care of you. You won't have to do a thing. I... It's the best thing. Now, you know that. All right? Watch David, it. what is going on? Nothing. Did somebody threaten you? Did they? Did, did, did somebody say There's something? There's nothing going on, all right? I'm going to keep it that way. talk about? I think so. I think there's some things I could help you out with. I'll listen to you, Charlie, but I don't think I need any help. Look, I thought maybe if we talk, we could strike a deal here. You know I worked for Marchese. This isn't about who you work for. I did a lot of things for him that you'd want to know. I mean, I could give you names, information, anything you want. I don't need it. We're going all the way on this one, Charlie. No deals. 
Sorry. Wait a minute, Walter. What do you want? What do you, what do you want? What do you want? You know things about his operation? What do you want? No names? Hits? I'll give you a hit. Willie Stallone, Jersey City, Christmas Eve, 1966. I did that hit. Marchese, call it! What do you want to know, Walter? I'll give you anything you want. Walter! Walter! Holiday period. Because thousands of our courageous sons and millions of brave South Vietnamese have answered... You, you probably don't remember me. Uh, Mitchell, right? I was there when they decorated. Yeah. What you think I forgot? Look, in 61, before they abolished capital punishment, you put a guy in the chair. At your service, Detective Mitchell. Come on in. Thanks. How about, uh, so, that let me get you something. Our answer to here at home. Our answer here at home in Look, I just wanted to talk. I was proud of it, let me tell you that. Very proud of it. One of the last cops in New York State to put a man in a chair. And this guy had it coming, too, if anybody did. He gave me the Medal of Honor for it, just like you. That was my fourth medal, but uh, let me tell you, that was the one... Wait a second. That's not what they gave you the medal for, is it? No, not the cop killing. No, a different case. Yeah. And they're not giving you nothing for it, either, are they? Not after you tell them you don't like their precious capital punishment, not after you don't go on TV for them. Am I right? I don't right? need any medals. I'm telling you, they asked me, you know. Detective Galvis, you put a man in the chair. Why don't you just tell everybody out there in television land how much fun it was? Look, if you don't want to talk about this, I understand, okay? You know, that's what everybody thinks, Mitchell. It's supposed to be such a big thing. Fastest gun in the West. Put a guy in the chair. I'm telling you. Nobody wants to talk to me about it. Figure it makes me feel uncomfortable. He don't want to talk about it, they say. That's when things started going downhill for him, they say. Don't you think I know what they say? You, uh, probably just came for some advice. Is that it? You, you want some advice? Yeah, sure. No. You came for absolution. You want me to tell you your conscience is clear. I can't give you that, Mitchell. No way in hell I can make it right for you, but uh, advice, yeah, I got some advice. You better be right. You better be ice cold right. And even then, it don't help. That's it. That's my advice. Well, I appreciate you, uh, taking the time to talk to me. You know, I, I, I just wanted to meet you and... Tell you what my mistake was. Never should have gone there. Gone there? They looked me straight in the eye just before they sat him down. I don't even think about it no more. Once in a while. Probably shouldn't have gone there. It wasn't a chair so much. It's just I never should have gone. Why did you go? I owed him that much. Don't you think? Gentlemen, I can't emphasize how important it is for you to stay in touch with your witnesses. We'll probably have about another month of motions, then we'll be ready to begin jury selection. So call them, talk to them, let them know things are moving forward. Okay? All right. All right? Stay in touch. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's uh, one other thing. Talk to the governor's office. We've decided to drop all lesser charges against Van and Rickler. What? Charges. Wait a minute, wait. Weapons charges, resisting arrest, assault on Mitchell here for Van. We've got everything from operating a stolen vehicle to manslaughter, and I'm dismissing all of it. That's crazy. If we don't get them on a murder charge, they walk. Ernie, this is a capital case. I want to make sure it gets decided that way. I don't want to give this jury any choices. Either they put these guys in the chair, or they put them back on the street. End of story. I'll see you all tomorrow. All right.
David, hope this makes it clearer for you, too. Hope it doesn't blow up in your face. Me, too. Mitchell? Yeah? Look, uh, I'm supposed to go see the district attorney. I, I was hoping I'd run into you. Yeah, so? It's kind of crowded around here. Uh, can we go someplace private and talk? What do we got to talk about? It'll just take a minute. You don't uh, remember me, do you? Arthur's. The night Travers was shot? Yeah, you were in a radio car. You let me a handcuffs. Yeah, well, yeah, well that's uh, kind of it. Look, you think I don't know what's going on? Everybody knows. You don't want those guys in the chair. I do. Well, it looks like you're in the majority. Well, don't get you with me, Michel. I know everybody's giving you a hard time, Ron, and I'm trying to help you out. What are you talking about? I'll take the collar for you. What? I'll testify. You don't have to. See, the way it happened was... All right, that's enough of this. No, right? see, the way it happened was my partner and I hear shots, so we drive down the street. There's this guy running. I jump out of the car, I grab him, then you come up, we give you the collar. You hear what you're saying? That's crazy. That's perjury. Now forget about it. No, you want to know what's crazy? It was you who told us to get down to that disco. Get out. Me and my partner. And Travis was still lying there, man. No ambulance or nothing. So we put him in the radio car. My partner takes him to the hospital. And the whole way there, he listens to him cry till it stops. I don't know what I did to him. His head's not right anymore. It's my partner, for God's sake. He's sitting at his locker with his gun in his hand. He just sits there, looking at it. Kelsey, I'm sorry about your partner, OK? But I can't help you. You don't believe in it. That's what you said. Giving you a way out. Not this way. Now, come on. Come on, let's get out of here. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Come on. Kellogg's Cracklin' Oat Bran tastes like little oatmeal cookies, which means grandmas are spending a lot less time in the kitchen. 
Cracklin' Oat brand's great oatmeal cookie taste comes from crunchy whole grain oats, which are baked with a touch of brown sugar. So now you can have that delicious cookie taste whenever. Come on, Marie. Which Give is why grandmas little... are spending Just less time making cookies and more time okay. making hay. Smile, smile. Kellogg's Cracklin' Oat brand, oatmeal cookie taste like grandma used to make. Let me get this straight. When you got me to switch from at and I gave you a list of my friends and my family. Then I give you the names and numbers of my friends and my family. Penny wants the names and numbers of my friends and my family. I don't want to give those out. At at and your friends are your business. Keeping you connected to them is ours. So if someone wants the names of your friends and your family, simply say, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. J.C. Penny, we've changed places. And our places have never looked better. From top to bottom. Front to back. Our stores are easier to shop. Our merchandise is easier to find. And our selection is tougher to resist. We changed, we changed, Penny. We've changed to keep up with you. We work. We play. We get dressed up. And sometimes we don't get dressed at all. We change, change, change. We've changed styles. And changed moods. We take care. And take charge. We're a good sport. A great time. And a wonderful surprise. And though we changed our stores from cosmetics to kids, one thing remains the same. Our great values. And great values are what make us... J.C. Penny. Some pick their targets at random. Some follow a fantasy of love. Others crusade for revenge. They can make you a victim at any time. They're obsessive, invasive, unpredictable, and they're always there. What's being done to protect you from stalkers? Ruth Spencer reports tonight at 11. I'm watching you. This woman told a jury that a rapist tied her up, taped her mouth, and videotaped his attack. But the jury said, not guilty. The man she accused, her own husband. Can a husband do whatever he wants to his wife? Don't miss this explosive Inside Edition. Inside Edition now at 4 and Inside Edition Extra at 4.30. Tomorrow on 4. I want to be a woman. I should have been a woman. Next, Jerry Springer. Why do they want to change their sex? Because I don't have the right equipment. How do they cope emotionally? Emotionally, I had made the transition years ago. How do they cope with public misunderstanding? He cannot be a real woman. For 20 years, I struggled with that. Jerry finds out why I'm fighting to be a transsexual. And how do we really know what they're going through anyway? The Jerry Springer Show, tomorrow morning at 10, only on Channel 4. This is it, David. You're going up against Frederick Berger, and he's going to try to eat you alive. Yeah. So any uncertainty, any hesitation, any doubt on your part is going to echo in the mind of those jurors like cannon Steve, shots. Do you understand I what I'm saying? I know what happened, all right? I know what I saw. Well, that's not enough. Listen to me. This is the biggest decision these people are ever going to make in their lives, and they're scared. You have to make it very clear for them. Van and Rickler aren't on trial here. You are. I'm not on trial. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. That's what the jury's looking at. Can they trust you? Can they believe you? Can you can you give them a direction? These men are supposed to die, David. I know what I'm going to do about it. I hope to God you do. Court calls to the stand, Detective David Mitchell. OK, you're on.
had a mother too, David, you know? You may proceed, Mr. Berger. I want to take you over your testimony, Detective Mitchell, and try to establish exactly what you saw and didn't see on the night in question. I ask you to weigh your testimony very carefully. You are aware, aren't you, that what you say could well cost these two young men their lives. Objection. He can't bring that in, Your Honor. It's a capital case, Your Honor. For God's sake, Your Honor, what's Both that got to do with anything? Approach the bench. Not another word. He can't bring in sentencing, Your Honor. He knows perfectly well you can never bring in sentencing. Your Honor, the jurors have been questioned about capital punishment in the voir dire. It's no secret that's what's involved here. Now, this goes directly to the witness's frame of mind. And I intend to establish a connection with his conduct. No, no, it's entirely improper, Your Honor. It's inflammatory. All right, it's I've prejudicial. heard you, Mr. Walter. This trial is about facts. It's about facts. You can't ask this witness to testify about a sentence. I said I heard you, Mr. Walter. Mr. Walter is quite correct that sentencing is not normally part of a criminal trial. Thank you. Your On Honor. the other hand, Mr. Berger's point is well taken that the jury is fully aware that this is a capital case. And given the fact that this police officer has never testified in such a case before, I'm going to allow it. I don't believe it. Subject to the connection Mr. Berger claims he will make. In that case, I move for a mistrial. Denied. Ask your question again, Mr. Berger. I asked you, Detective Mitchell, if you are aware that your testimony in this case might cost these two young men their lives. I'm very well aware of that, sir. Very well aware. Does this prospect trouble you, Detective Mitchell? Yeah, it troubles me. Because you're a compassionate man? I'm not exactly sure why, but it troubles me. That's an admirable sentiment, Detective Mitchell. You had occasion this spring to arrest a uh, Mickey Tom Brody. Is that right? Objection. Where is this going, Mr. Berger? If you just give me a moment, Your Honor. That's all I'll give you, Mr. Berger. Now, you hit him in the face with your gun in your hand. Isn't that right? Oh, I believe you uh, smashed his cheekbone and broke his jaw. Objection. Answer the question, please. I hit him, yes. And could you describe to us how you effected the arrest of the defendant, Mr. Van? We fought, and I hit him. With your gun in your hand, like brass knuckles. Objection, Your Honor, please. Strike that. The jury will disregard Mr. Berger's metaphor. I have my gun in my hand, yes. And subsequent to this arrest, was your gun, along with the guns of the other police officers involved in the arrest, surrendered to the police department's ballistics laboratory for examination? That's standard procedure in any shooting incident. And what did the ballistics report show? That my gun had not been fired. Is that all it showed? relevant to this arrest, yes. Didn't it, in fact, show that your gun was inoperable? Yes, sir. That, in fact, you hit the defendant so hard in the head that a trigger on your gun didn't work? Yes, sir. So, although you, you tell us that you're a compassionate man, that you're concerned about the prospect of death for these defendants, in point of fact, the only reason why you didn't kill my client at point-blank range on that sidewalk was this accident to your gun, wasn't it? I hit him so I wouldn't have to shoot him. Is that right, Detective Mitchell? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll blow you away. those words sound familiar? Yes, sir, they do. You shouted those words to Mr. Van, didn't you, Detective Mitchell? Yes, sir. Only your gun didn't work. I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll blow you away. The fact is, you wanted to kill my client then, 
And you still want to kill them now. Isn't that right, Detective Mitchell? No, I don't want to kill him. I don't want to kill anybody. Why, because you're such a compassionate man? Is that what you want us to believe in point of fact, Detective Mitchell? In point of fact, Mr. Berger, how I feel about this is none of your business. It's none of the jury's business. It's got nothing to do with this trial. When I walked into this courtroom today, the defendant's mother asked me why I was killing her son. I couldn't answer her because uh, I didn't know what to say. All I can say right now is that when I sat down in this chair, I took an oath. And I took an oath when I first put on my uniform. The only decision I have to make is to tell the truth. I thank God I don't have to decide what happens after that because, quite frankly, I don't know how to make a decision like that. If your clients go to the electric chair, Mr. Berger, they're not going because I want them to go or because I don't want them to go or whatever. They're going for one reason. Because they shot and killed John Travis. Your Honor, could you instruct the witness to confine himself to the facts? I can't see how I can do that, Mr. Berger. You're the one who asked him the question. <laughs> David? Yeah? How'd it go? It, uh... Well, it's over. Summation's in the charge, and then it goes to the jury. That's not what I meant. I know what you meant. And? I, uh... I got to say what I wanted to say. I love you, too. So, um, I won't get to see you till after the verdict, will I? No, but I'll call you as soon as I know something, all right? I love you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, sir, we have. As to the defendant, Giancarlo Vanelli, also known as Charlie Van, how say you? We, the jury, find the defendant guilty as charged, guilty of murder in the first degree. As to the defendant, Carl Rickler, how say you? We, the jury, find him guilty as charged, murder in the first degree. Under New York state law, I am empowered, if the jury so recommends, to pass a sentence of death in cases that involve the intentional murder of a police officer while performing his duties. Ladies and gentlemen, are you satisfied on the evidence you have heard that Patrolman John Travers, at the time of his death, was a police officer engaged in the performance of his duties? Yes, Your Honor, we are. And have you determined your recommendation with respect to capital punishment? Yes, sir, we have. We recommend we do not recommend capital punishment. I want to thank the jury for their hard work. Sentencing will commence seven days from this date. This court is adjourned. All rise. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, buddy, you did it. Good job. See you outside. Do a good job. Get back to being cops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you later. We do what we had to do. It was their decision. Take care of you.
We've been telling folks for some time now about the fresh squeezed taste of Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice. However...